first, I want to urge you to look comprehensively at everything we do. One thing we did, we did in Ulster County, under and with money from the state, was to make a study of what Ulster County, all of all the municipalities in, government, in Ulster County, do. We got 12 governments to sign on, 12 towns and villages to sign on with the county on this study, and we looked at it comprehensively. Why is that important? It's important because we can see what our opportunities are synoptically, totally, not the highways are annoying, or this opportunity, uh, one town is showing us how to do this with another village. So I, I let the chart out here. What we did across the participating governments was we said, by function, which is a fundamental way to approach this problem, we said, who does what? A whole list of the functions on one side, and a whole list of governments on the other side. And you can see where the boxes are crossed out is an opportunity to work together, because you're both doing Another thing we did was we prepared a, uh, a list of all the intergovernmental agreements in Ulster County. So all the governments in Ulster County could see what everybody was doing with each other. So if there was an opportunity that, uh, that uh, right in our county that other people were creating, they could join in on that opportunity or they could take it up with a neighbor. So simply, systematically figuring out what you're up to helps you understand what you're up to. Find also outside a, uh, um, a table of contents to that study, and that table of contents is organized within a framework that I think is interesting and important for you to think about. What are the things we all do? We can cooperate on those things. What are the things we must do with each other? And we heard some of them mentioned. We have to do the personnel function with each other. How are we doing on that? Are we doing that efficiently? The counties provide the personnel function under the civil service system for almost all other governments within the county boundaries, with the exception of some cities that maintain a, a civil service commission. Many cities are, are, are taking opportunities to give up those commissions. So what are the things we do with each other? Another thing uh, we do with each other is raise the property tax. One jurisdiction does the assessment that everybody uses. But some areas we all we do we discreetly do these things, elements of these things. So we have each have a tax collector, we might each have a contract with a different bank. And in other uh, uh, places we might be providing a function for another, or in the case of counties, we might be providing a guarantee of the levy for other. And this reaches across opportunities in these areas where we have to do things with each other. We're required to do them, or we actually are doing them already. Third category, how do we behave when we're customers? And that's been heavily discussed today. You know, we can buy things with each other. Now one non-obvious point, and I'm going to anticipate myself, is sometimes we don't have to be uh, contiguous to collaborate. Buying electronic services, you don't have to be next door to each other to collaborate. So, so people shouldn't limit, in my judgment, and I'm going to take questions so you'll have an opportunity to disagree, but people shouldn't limit their thinking about with whom they collaborate to the person next door. I wrote a book once with uh, Dick Nathan at the Rockefeller Institute, many, uh, it seems more recently, but it's actually uh, 15 years ago talked about the collaboration of nested jurisdictions like villages within towns, towns within counties, towns within school districts, and collaboration with adjacent, between adjacent institutions or among adjacent institutions. And we also talked about the degree to which collaboration 
second, I see uh, my uh, colleague Robert Jacobowitz, I think I do have it, I, I have these three-way glasses now, so I don't have to keep taking them off and putting them on to read, but there's a disadvantage that somewhere the focal length is wrong in there, and I can't see it that well. Robin just wrote a great paper that you can take away, we left you copies, about uh, collaborative op opportunities. We have a project at OJ and Ulster County called the 2020 Project, organized by the school board, Association of the County, and the fundamental aspect of this uh, this uh, project is that it's and this and the school board association just published in Tracy a small essay from this paper that we've also provided also provided to you. And the fundamental aspect here is that we're thinking countywide about school services and collaboration. One point that that Robin makes there is if we get trapped in the conventional discourse, we're not going to make any progress. And so. Uh, heard a little bit, Tim mentioned a little bit about school consulting. Uh, now we have a little under 700 school districts in New York State, if I got that right. We had, there was a time we had 10,000, but something happened, you know, between 1942 and the 60s. But right now, uh, researchers at Syracuse University confirm our, our view that there aren't a lot of opportunities for school consolidation that saves money in the state. When you look at the actual places, actually near other places that actually are potentially candidates for consolidation. But the minute you talk about efficiency and collaboration in schools, people think you're talking about consolidation and they have a point of view. We don't want to give up our community. So you have to avoid the conventional discourse. And we think that we've, we've done that with this paper. We think you can do it by approaching it countywide uh, with, in collaboration with BOCES. And, uh, and this leads me to another, Collaboration between the school districts and the municipalities is a fundamental requirement and a fundamental need. We've heard that there's some of that going on, but there's so much more that could be going on. Counties have an interest in it in the, in the, in the preschool uh, special needs kids area. Uh, the school districts are just taking on more responsibilities. The whole special needs kids uh, question in New York is a very challenging question, a very challenging cost center that needs to be addressed. So we need to. That's an obvious area of collaboration, but we have a really big and important local government uh, category or cl classification of local governments that needs to work with other local governments ev if everybody's going to do their jobs better. Insofar as there are barriers, in both seats there are barriers to the way to the, the organization is financed and the way its programs are financed through this collaboration. They have to be addressed, assessment uh, state, so that suggests that it has to be a collaborative state agenda for all the associations that, that incorporates but also transcends a particular agenda with those associations. So second, not accepting limits. The classic area in where limits are accepted is, is the assessment function. We can't move the assessment function, the argument is, from a, a town to a county level. I'm not arguing whether it should be desirable or not, but just the point, the stopper is the state constitution won't let us do it because we need multiple referenda and multiple referenda can't be achieved in New York uh, with any of these. It's not very unlikely. Schuyler County has shown us that the assessment function can be moved by contract, by, by contracting among local governments and with the county. So we can get the outcome without confronting the legal barriers by smart thinking. So one thing we need is a change in state law. Another way, we. Another thing we need is more thinking about workarounds if something's desirable. And you can see counties across the state starting to say, okay, we'll give this a try. It's happening now in Orange County. We, we did a study for the Northern Duchess uh, uh, Alliance in which we uh, identified these opportunities for Northern Duchess. Now the Duchess County Executive uh, has his own uh, responsibility uh, to worry about and he told me, Jerry, uh, I love collaboration, and he incentivized collaboration with, with county dollars, but I'm not going to do collaboration that costs counties more, costs the county more, to save somebody else money. And this comes me to, this brings me to the fundamental uh, flaw, in, in my opinion, in the, uh, there are a lot of flaws to or small points to make, or modest points to make about this, this piece of legislation. But the fundamental flaw is it doesn't address fully bringing into con 
convergence, the uh, interests of all the local governments in New York so they'll truly work together. Now, Mike Connors is here and I'm working with him on a very important study that I we expect all, we hope and expect all many county will undertake. He's been the driving force and the uh, initiator of this idea. But he wants, he thinks that massive money can be saved by local governments working together in Albany County by approaching the problem in a different way. Now, I, I left outside for you uh, uh, data that we, uh, or a summary of all the property tax uh, levy for 2012 by municipalities and school districts in Albany County, and uh, it, it comes up to uh, 600 of that is $6.98 million for all governments. For municipalities, $2.4 million, uh, not including school districts. Now, if we wanted governments to work together, we'd say your 1% target for municipalities is $2.4 million. Work together to achieve it. Don't say Green Island has a target, Water Elite has a target, Gilderland has a target, Rensselaerville has a target, and so on. Now, this is hard to do because everybody's responsible for governing within that, within their, within their own government. So they're going to say, well, how am I credited if I help Green Island? If I make the saving in the, Bal in the city of Albany? But this is the same taxpayers, isn't it? Isn't it? So, we should be figuring out how to incentivize these, kind of these kinds of joint outcomes and joint behaviors to produce those outcomes rather than distributing the demand across jurisdictions, some of which have been working 10 years to, be, uh, to, to reach economies and some of which have been fortunate in having less pressure from uh, the economy or less pressure from their citizens and have been working less hard. Well, Michael's idea was, let's look at the workforce, the primary cost center, and let's see what everybody does, and let's use vacancies, instead of managing vacancies inside governments, let's use vacancies across the county, and let's see where everybody lives so we don't impose on them, and let's not try to force them to do anything. Let's see if we can figure out how we can use these vacancies collectively that arrive in our study of functions and, and overlaps and so on, and delivery of services to help people find economies over time. And then the further idea, which, uh, um, which arises out of that is, well, you're going to confront the labor unions because you're, you're, you're taking away jobs. But the fact of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, that we've been taking away jobs by not filling vacancies and making economies already. So the issue is, are we going to take, are we, are we going to keep the people working who are working and get the job done, and maintain the quality of services by acting in good and smart ways, by planning forward, or are we going to have traumatic amputations? That's the kind of question to raise with the union leaders. My experience with union leaders, and I have some, is that the people working now are the most important, not the people potentially working, because they voted for and that doesn't mean we want to hurt services, but we want to be smart about planning to collective action. So the state should be, the floor in the state's incentive system is it's not, it's saying work collectively, but it's not rewarding collective outcomes, it's rewarding individual outcomes, in my opinion. So I said, take a comprehensive look so you can pick your targets. Don't accept limits in law but find ways to, to do what you want to do. By the way, that re one thing that happened in Schuyler County and the other counties that have done this, a trusted person has taken the lead in one of those governments. And by that I mean a person who the other people know in the other governments, who they believe is honest, forthright, and capable. So they're not hiring Benjamin from some remote part of the state who thinks he's smart. Getting beyond the standard paradigm, and that's what our school district collaboration point is. Let's think countywide about this, this problem. Let's not think school district by school district. And the BOCES is a resource and a tool. The state has purposely marginalized BOCES in this process, and it's interesting to think about why that is. I think they don't want to, they have issues about reinforcing that set of organizations because of the way that
not using the obvious tool. They created a tool to do the, the job they want done and aren't using it. It's a little strange. Fourth point, redefine the problem. Albany County is redefining the problem. Let's work together. Let's think, uh, Ulster County, we're saying, let's think countywide. An interesting question, and, and you know, somebody talked about passion. I have not only passion, but 45 years of uh, paying attention to this, so you guys are in serious trouble. I'm, all, <laughs> I'm also a, a professor, and I'm used to speaking at great length, so you're, you're in even worse trouble. But, 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 but the one thing we did, I said to him, somebody talked about mapping. Mapping is enormously important. We've been mapping in Newburgh and helping them understand how they can get their departments to work better together by bringing different databases into mapping system and doing overlays and, and having dynamic interaction possibilities with the maps, you know, if we find uh, houses where there were uh, uh, five crime calls or more and where there were uh, uh, housing violations uh, identified, what are those houses, you know, so bringing the databases together, bringing in different districts. Uh, I said to my uh, very smart uh, colleague, how would you plow the roads in Northern Dutchess County if there were no municipal boundaries? What would be the optimal way, taking, taking the, the current locations of the, uh, of the uh, salt sheds and the, and the garages, what would be the optimal way to do this? What can we show those governments about how this might be done, and then how can we back into the way the governments or, or you know, or what their what their responsibilities are to help them make economy. So plan with plan around or beyond the boundaries that limit your thinking. That doesn't mean you have to act in every instance about what you find out, but you're going to see opportunities, especially in these visual tools that you didn't see before. But if you think about how can I cooperate with Rosendale or how can I cooperate with Gardner, you're not going to see it. You're not going to see it in, in its totality or its Finding common interests in others' interests. Community colleges are enormously invested in serving people within defined geographic areas. They're facing massive declines in the school-going population. They have to find new people to serve. School districts have challenges in ensuring that their kids in their senior year are college ready. Community colleges don't want do remediation. They have an interest in helping the English and math departments in high schools do better. So those are the people who are going to present, and they have an interest in getting those people to come to them. So what's the opportunity between community colleges and high schools? Find out what the other guys need so that you can help them meet their need and meet your need. We have a big challenge coming in New York City to the property tax classification scheme for leveling, leveling the property tax, allegedly racially biased in its effect. We also have a large number of jurisdictions in upstate New York that have dual, uh, that, that, that divide their base into homestead and non-homestead properties for the purpose of taxes, both school districts and local governments. Some people think that that economic development consequence is negative for our most settled areas and we're locked in because the school districts who've adopted it lose it if the municipalities that adopt it stop doing it. We just did a major study on this in Kingston, and I said to Peter, said, Peter, you have to study it on your desk. You need to write me a letter that says, Jerry, attaboy. <laughs> So, the governor wants to develop upstate New York's economy. If there's a major barrier in the way we levy the property tax in many established upstate places like Buffalo and Syracuse and Rochester and smaller places like Kingston and the Kingston School District, shouldn't the governor be helping us reform how we're levying these taxes so we can have a better argument when somebody wants to buy a building or build a building in Kingston? decides he can't do it, because, or she can't do it because uh, of the way we're levying taxes on commercial properties in those places. 
that's an opportunity that New York challenges New York City is going to create for upstate. I talked about multi-jurisdictional approaches, but the danger in them is that you say, when everybody signs on, we'll do it. Not a good idea if you try to get reform in highway, uh, for collaboration in highway services, as, uh, as Chimon County demonstrated. What you do is you demonstrate it works in collaboration and keep the door open to others, and they come in because their citizens see that it's working. So don't give anybody a veto. Credit the people who do it. I would urge all local elected officials in the room who are going to do things to make the property tax burden lighter to take credit for it. We're not doing it because the governor is forcing us to. We're doing it because we're good at the, what we're doing. We're good public servants who want to help the community. And if the governor took a more reasonable approach, we could even do even better. Because people who are in my 12 years in elected office taught me that danger was taking the credit for other people, but where you actually did the work, you wanted the credit because it helped you get the job. And then a couple more points. Allow your adversaries to see opportunities in what you want to do. I've talked about unions in that regard. And finally, use time as your friend. Our predisposition is always to think about next year. What are we going to do in next year's budget? How are we going to deal with the pressure of this planning requirement? How are we going to uh, uh, be ready before the next election to face the, face the public? My friend Peter Fairweather at the private consulting company, some of you may know him, he's very talented, he's an alum of our college, did a wonderful study for the village of Sorgates and the town of Sorgates on their police department. Now you notice the third rail People are very supportive of their community police departments, and they're very expensive. They're usually, uh, this, if not the first, the second cost center in, in, in villages and small places. Um, and, and the reasons they're expensive are interesting and important, but not germane to this comment. But the village was in trouble financially. It, it, did, it could not see, the mayor of the village could not, and the, and the village trustees could not see a path to fiscal balance while maintaining the police department. So they actually agreed to enter into this collaboration. And they did a study that used time and showed what would happen in certain, using certain retirements, using expected retirements, and taking advantage of openings as they occur. And they had a five-year plan. And they presented this to the boards and, and the communities, and they accepted this plan. Interesting thing happened. I ran into the mayor. You know, I go around to the various communities and schmooze. Mayors, I go to meetings and eat dinners and so on. That's I call my job eating for the university. And, 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 and so uh, I ran to the mayor and said, How's it going? He said, It's unbelievable. Uh, we're hiring cops. And I said, How can you be hiring cops? I mean, you had this vacancy management program, you were going to bring everything together, it was going to take time. You know, you, you, you knew that your, your chief was retiring, so you could, you could, you could get that single headed department. He said, but well, when we did these changes over at the same time, a lot of things happened that we didn't expect. Opportunities arose in other police departments. People took other jobs. We had our plan, and we're realizing the effects of our plan. And it wasn't because people were forced out. It was because they were looking at the plan and the potential of this plan for their own careers and what their opportunities might be and the pay in other places where cops were being hired in the Hudson Valley, and they took other jobs. So by moving forward on a plan with time as your friend, you actually realize the plan's, effect, you, the, the plan's goals earlier and save more money. And it's often forgotten in my, in my experience that time is one of the most critical variables in getting new things to happen in organizations. Now, it should be obvious to you that that's so, and it should be obvious, it should, it should be occurring to you that this is not a very smart observation. And my response to that would be, Things that are obviously so after somebody brings them to your attention, maybe the smartest observation. So, so I'm congratulating you. <laughs> now, uh, I have a lot of other things to say on this in, in specific, but a lot of specifics were offered to you. I hope you don't think these generalizations are beyond uh, utility. Regarding uh, the Albany project, I'm extremely, extremely interested in that. I think that it is a potential breakthrough opportunity 
use the to use the worker as the unit of analysis that's a social science term we've always been using the government as the unit of analysis you know how can this government work with that government how do we make this budget work against that budget but the major and, and, and without diminishing valuing people and, and, and that's a fundamental requirement for anybody in government to value people you work for the citizens and the value of people you work with the people in the government and the other elected officials that's the unit where the costs are that's the unit where the aspirations are the goals are and the commitments are in each family so we should be analyzing at that unit and seeing how the co but not on a particular way in my judgment but in a collective way how many people are there who work on the road where do they live what are their plans for themselves what are the opportunities that presents in albany county not just in the city of albany not just in, in the county government but in the whole of the county so that's a I'm 69, so I can't do too many more projects, but that's one that I'm hoping uh, to really make a breakthrough, an analytic breakthrough for government, local government and corporate leaders. So thank you for your time. I hope you, these ramblings have some utility for you. I'm going to be around for lunch because I'm, you know, I want to get the maximum benefit. Out of <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm willing to take questions, of course. So it's hard to do. Uh, let me give some other, while you're standing there, forgive sure. me for this. There are 50, roughly 50 villages in New York that couldn't be villages today because they couldn't meet the population requirement. So when I was on the Lundin Commission, I said we need to pay attention to things like that. You know, that, that you might have been created at a time, you have not had any size, you might have some access. So what I would propose is maximizing collaborative until, which uses a time variable, and then, then when you get those in place over time, you then can ask the question, look, we're 80% there, we're 70% there, do we want to? And then the community might be ready to consider the, the, uh, the idea. I'm happy to look at the specifics with you if you want me to. Or we'll have you later. That's great. Thank so you. please, Thank you so please. Much. I have business cards in my pocket if you can. Thank you. Other, uh, Yes, ma'am. Our school district recently did a merger study with another school district. We were about in the country, and the school districts were more than seven district, district seven miles apart. They were not feasible. Um, we found out that from the the fellow, what was his name, John, um, the, the, the doing the uh, Tommy Four thing. He's John Steinberg.
to murder, not the ones that are rural and have tons of miles between them, but then it's not feasible for parents to pick up a child, drop off their child to get sick. It's just not feasible. And you know, my thing is, all right, I grew up on Long Island, and when I, you know, it's in the 1950s, and it, and the schools were popping up all oh, every year. It was opening new school, new school, new school, new school. I live mile away from one district, but I was bus to a, the high school that was three miles away. That was my district. Right. There's so many districts down here that could easily merge, and they're not merging at well, all. Well, Robin's here. She did the uh, paper. You can talk to her about mergers and when they make sense from a – raise your hand, Robin, please – when they make sense from a, a, a financial and operational point of view. But what we're doing, what we're talking about is things like this. Uh, and there are some upstate BOCES that are doing this. Maybe we shouldn't have separate transportation systems for all those school districts. Maybe kids would be on the bus less time on average if we plan transportation countywide and saw what the alternatives are. One, one of our problems is well, maybe we should be using electronic uh, instruction uh, partly 